Right now, 150 new cases of COVID-19 in the county. About 4% of more than 3,400 tests performed yesterday came back positive, and that's slightly higher than Saturday's rate. But some good news here, there are no new deaths to report. There are a total number of 4,926 confirmed cases, but 2,868 people have now recovered. Some good news there, Stella. And today, UC San Diego will enter its first phase in the first of its kind plan to bring students back to campus. That plan all depends on on testing every single one of those students. News 8's Netta Rampour is live to explain more. Good morning, Netta. Yeah, good morning. So UC San Diego is starting this today, this morning, in fact, and they're going to be able to eventually test all 60,000 students and staff here on campus because their goal is to get these students back here on campus as early as this September. Right now, classes are being held online. There are some 5,000 students currently staying in the dorms, and that's who they'll be able to test first came about by asking the question, what would it take to bring all the students back to campus and have an in-person uh, residential experience like uh, we've had for the last uh, 50, 60 years? So that's the university's chancellor, Pradeep Khosla, and he says it took teams of molecular biologists and infectious disease specialists to come up with this idea, again, ultimately resulting in the testing of at least 60,000 students and staff here at UC San Diego. So he believes they are the only university in the nation to be able to do this at such a massive level. Now, they will have stations equipped with containers consisting of those single clean nasal swab tests, and students will be able to pick up those tests out of those containers which will be set up near their dorms they'll swab their own noses then drop off the sample in a collection box and they expect results as early as the next morning anyone who tests positive would be expected to self-isolate in fact the university will have places for them to be able to isolate here on campus and then they're going to do contact tracing so anyone a student may have come in contact with they will then test those people now the chancellor says they'll be ready to deliver 1200 tests a day for as long as necessary and as far as the results go they say only medical professionals and public health officials and of course the student will know the results of their tests but again this is all starting today and those stations will be set up near their dorms so it will take place among those dorms and each student has to go get their tests on their own do the test themselves and then submit it themselves all through an app as well that's the latest live here at uc san diego we'll send it back to you Netta, thank you. And one local company has been given emergency approval by the FDA for a rapid coronavirus test. Quidel recently developed its Sophia antigen test and says it delivers results in 15 minutes. The test uses sample swabs collected at a patient's nose or throat. Quidel says it's now shipping the rapid tests to hospitals across the country and is accepting new orders. Let's take a look now at the latest coronavirus numbers. Worldwide, there are more than 4.1 million cases. Here in the United States, there are more than 1.3 million cases. More than 80,000 people have now died. But the good news, more than 210,000 people have recovered. Vice President Mike Pence is not among those in self-quarantine, despite his press secretary testing positive for coronavirus. A spokesman for the vice president says he plans to be at the White House today and continues to follow the advice of the White House medical unit. Staff members say Vice President Pence has been tested every single day, showing negative results. Three top health officials, including Dr. Anthony Fauci, are now quarantining on some level after coming into contact with at least one of them. The White House economic team discussed the pandemic's financial toll yesterday. There's a considerable risk of not reopening. You're talking about what would be permanent economic damage. White House Economic Advisor Kevin Hassett says the White House is closely watching states that have reopened. It comes as Arizona becomes the latest state to allow restaurants to reopen today. A model used by the administration increases the projected death toll after seeing more people moving around. An Oceanside gym owner may try to reopen his business again today after being cited for not following state and county health orders to remain closed. News 8's Chris Crow is live in Oceanside this morning with a story. And Chris, why did the owner uh, open up to begin with? I know there's a lot of confusion back and forth. 
There is, and this spreads out over three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, according to Lou Yerdell here, the Metroflex gym owner, he says on Friday, Oceanside police told him he could reopen. So Saturday, he was open and he remained open all day. But then on Saturday night, he actually received a call from Oceanside police saying that he needed to be closed or he could be potentially cited. Well, on Sunday, he decided to reopen and then this happened. As you can see right there, that's Yerdell speaking with Oceanside Police Department officers there inside of his gym. He's in that purple tank top and it was just moments later that he's placed. He was placed into handcuffs to be momentarily detained and then cited for violating county and state health orders. Now he was released and uh, he was only cited. Now if you're not confused enough here, take into consideration that also on Saturday, Oceanside City Councilman Christopher Rodriguez wrote a public letter urging all business like your Dells to reopen, saying that the customers in Oceanside should support them. Then Mayor Peter Weiss wrote an opposing letter saying Rodriguez's opinion is not the official position of the city of Oceanside and that the city must follow the county health order. And under that health order, businesses like your Dells must remain closed. Now, for his part, your Dells says he did implement a number of new safety procedures to try to open up the gym safely on Saturday. It included extra hand sanitizer a time limit on workouts and other protocols that would be strictly enforced by staff. But if he tries to reopen again today, it could not just be him who may end up cited. It's pretty confusing. The worst part about it is they're threatening to arrest our members for working out. And again, uh, he was not arrested. He was detained and then cited. But his customers do face potentially being cited uh, if they are here to work out. Now, a spokesperson for Oceanside Police Department told us that they don't know of anyone that told Yerdell that he could reopen on Friday, which Yerdell uh, does mention in our interview. But on Facebook, Yerdell did post something, or at least someone from the Metroflex gym page here in Oceanside, basically saying that no one told them they could reopen and they did so knowing the ramifications of what could happen. Now, to be clear, gyms are not part of the reopening phase two uh, that plan put forth by Governor Gavin Newsom. That's not until phase three. Now, obviously, some cities, some counties could be moving ahead of schedule uh, more so than the state. But as, as you saw there from Oceanside Mayor Pete Weiss, uh, Oceanside not ready for gyms to reopen just yet. Guys, back to you. All right, Chris, thanks for uh, assembling that for us. We really appreciate uh, you ironing that out. Time now for your morning rush today. Escondido nurses and other health care workers are set to hold another rally. They'll be demanding the contract cancellation of Palomar Health CEO Diane Hansen and the rescinding of what they call illegal layoff notices to over 200 employees. Late last month, Hansen reported patient visits falling by half in the previous six weeks and says Palomar had to absorb a loss of more than $5 million. Year-round campuses in the San Diego Unified School District fully launched distance learning today. They began their soft launch last April. Uh, traditional schools have already fully implemented graded online instruction. Students who took part in the soft launch received credit for the work. Businesses are struggling to stay afloat during the coronavirus pandemic, and some have added service fees to combat business costs. Social media posts came in over the weekend showing a Poway restaurant charging what they called a COVID fee for carne asada. Other businesses like Small Goods in La Jolla haven't added extra fees yet, but say they are struggling. Small Goods opened its stores just as the pandemic was starting, but credits loyal customers for keeping their business alive. And that's the morning rush. Renewed concerns about the health and safety of detained immigrants. Saturday, a vigil was held outside of an Otay Mesa detention center in honor of Carlos Ernesto Escobar Mejia. He died last Wednesday from coronavirus, the first reported death in ICE custody. Advocates say he had lived most of his life in Los Angeles and was being detained while seeking asylum. They say ICE and Homeland Security failed to protect him and others from the spread of the virus. We've been concerned that they haven't had adequate um, protective gear. We know that they have had more than 124 positive cases. ICE acknowledged the death of Mejia, stating that he was tested repeatedly and was immediately hospitalized after showing symptoms.